And welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Um, this is Community Matters, and we're talking about the cutting edge on algae. Uh, sometimes you can look at algae for a long time and never find anything that cuts. That's why it's, it's, <laughs> there's a bit of humor, irony in the cutting edge on algae. It doesn't cut. Um, it's more than just lipids for energy, though. Uh, back in the day, uh, gee whiz, uh, algae was a, a promising biofuel, and Heidi Kunley was involved in developing it under uh, Kunley Agrosystems in Manoa. Uh, she's a research scientist, and I remember visiting her lab a number of times and being so impressed with what she was doing, not only in the lab, but outside in the field. So this is really um, old home week here today. We talked to Heidi about, about what she's doing with algae, the cutting edge, not only in algae, as a, as a fuel, but algae for so many other things. Science takes you wherever it wants. The natural world opens huge vistas of opportunity. That's what Heidi Kuhnley is about. Uh, so in one moment, we're going to talk to her some more. Energy 808, the cutting edge, except it goes beyond energy with Heidi Kuhnley. Welcome to the show, Heidi. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Like old home week. It is. So it's great to see you, let me, let me say that in the old days, I remember, you know, the, all the algae you were growing in your laboratory and squeezing the lipid oil out of them and making the lipid oil into arguably a fuel. And there was so much competition for green energy. This was a perfect example. And you were a leader in, in researching clean energy back in the in the aught years, the early aught years, I, I should say. You've been That's right. Long time, yeah. That's and, right. And now we revisit with you and you, we find that it's indeed it's 20, 20 years later. <laughs> so let's spend a little time catching up, Heidi. What have you been doing? Well, in the yes, we were a, an algae strain supplier to all these upcoming innovative biofuels companies trying to produce algae from biological sources um, through growing algae rather than uh, through fossil fuels. And, and we, there was a real drive to get um, clean, renewable oils uh, back in the day. 19, this is 20, 2008. The U.S. government provided millions of dollars to fund large companies and defense contractors. Um, and some of that money trickled down to us to provide the strains that supported their efforts to make biofuels. But it it, um, it was a it was a, a long task. It's still in progress for some companies, but the the cost of fuel, the barrel of oil cost goes up and down. And when it's below like $70 a barrel, algae oil seems very expensive. When it's more than that, it starts making sense. So Lots going on that um, pose challenges to getting algae biofuels, even though they work perfectly well in jet engines and so forth, all validated by our military. Uh, economically, it was a no-go. And as an algae research company, we asked ourselves, well, what are we going to do? Uh, it, so we became algae experts in that time that you were that you and I were talking, and we realized we have to do things very differently. If you're going to make any products from algae beyond what's out in the market already, you know, these really expensive vitamin type algae products, you got to do things differently. And we're quite good at that, thinking out of the box. So that's what we did since we saw you last. We came up with a whole new scheme on how to grow algae and how to grow things better and cheaper and faster. Now, this reminds me of a, a very early show we did on Think Tech on the radio. We were talking about um, a computer software program. And we got a call from outside. A guy called and he said, uh, you're talking about computer software, but you haven't told us what electricity is. Uh, so can you please? <laughs> you can't do software without electricity, right? And uh, I turned to the guest and I said, this one's for you. <laughs> so uh, my question to you is, could you tell the people what algae is? I mean, not only how it looks and feels, but what's the, you know, what's the, What's the what's the material in there? Yeah, what is algae? Well, algae are single cells. They're microbes. Um, they're like bacteria or yeast, single cells, but they happen to, a lot of them photosynthesize, so they grow with sunlight, and they um, use up CO2 and give out o oxygen, so they're just like plants, but they're single cells. Um, and they're filled with all sorts of nutritious compounds, 
it, the oils that you could use for fuels, but you can also eat those oils. And algae have very, very healthy oils that you are getting in your diet today. If you're eating fish, you're eating algae oils because the fish are getting that in their diet. If you're eating any kind of dietary supplements with pigments in them, like astaxanthin, which is one of our specialties, that's coming from microalgae. If you need vitamins, minerals, um, protein, algae is chock full of healthy edible materials. Uh, and so as a single cell, as a single, as a plant, that's a single cell, it's just really healthy to eat algae in general. But the, the big deal is it's just expensive to grow enough of it. Uh, to How compete. do you grow it? I, I remember Shell Oil was trying to get into algae in, um, in Kona, uh, in the in Nelha uh, uh, laboratory in Kona. And they Sure. And they had acres and acres of open algae ponds. And uh, I remember the issue was preventing contamination. Yeah. Growing algae is not so easy. Huh? Right. Well, actually, yeah, it depends what you're growing, but it, it can be quite economical if you're growing in these big open ponds, and especially if you're growing in seawater um, and you have the right management techniques in place, you, you, can, produce, um, you can produce crops algae crops that that give you different nutritional value or oil value, whatever you're looking for. But the problem is that we are running out of water. Uh, so fresh water, a lot of the good algae, the algae that we want in our diets are grown in, in fresh water or not, not salt, not high salt water, like ocean water. How do you, how do you, we're, we're running out of water, especially Kona side. And then how do you grow enough? If you have those ponds, you have acres, but you need, hundreds, gazillion acres to, to grow enough to have an impact for certain things that we're interested in, which is is um, for food purposes. And so so those those ponds, like you mentioned, then you saw over at Nelha, they're great and they can and there's excellent producers there, but they're for very, very specific high value markets, not for the products we're interested in. So can you change, uh, select or change algae from one composition to another? Can yeah. you do a Mendelian, uh, you know, Mendelian uh, uh, genetics on it? Can you do, you do yeah. GMO genetics on it? Yeah. We don't. Our stuff is all natural. We're targeting natural ingredients. So our stuff is non non GMO. It's not mutated either. We take natural variability that exists in algae and harness that, um, matching it up with our fermentation production technique and I have some slides that I can show you about it but that's the whole thing is taking you know nature is filled with variability that you just have you have to look for and understand it and work with it to to um to benefit from it but we also do breeding I'm a plant breeder by training and we do natural crosses of algae to highlight some of the characteristics that we're interested in like protein for example so you take one kind of algae and put it into the other algae. It's all the same yeah. kind of algae. We're just crossing within within um, the same species. They just have different traits that we we like, and so we we cross them together. It's it's, it's a real skill. I mean, it's an art and a skill. Um, and so not a lot of people do that, but we do it when we need to. Most of our stuff, though, is just nat. Like our astaxanthin is all natural. Well, so, you know. So then, what you're telling me is that the essential operation of your laboratory is still the same yeah. it's 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 growing algae and and you know checking out algae from a scientific point of view what's different is how you use the algae that's exactly right and in the in the over the last few years we filed and were issued patents that allow that's around the production technology so growing algae in the dark which kind of goes against your well, you think algae grow, but no, we found out if you grow them in the dark, they have a, they they blossom and they can make all these compounds within a couple of days. So it's much more efficient. We use much less water, much less land. It's just like growing beer, like yeast and beer vats, but we're growing microalgae in beer vats, basically. And that just you know, it took us five years to get there, but that's what we're doing now. Agriculture is so important to Hawaii. You're really part of that, I think. And I'm reminded that there are there's a whole industry in Singapore and elsewhere, actually, in the U.S. mainland that does vertical agriculture. Yeah. Um, that that you know takes you need sunlight, right, to do all this. 
Um, so um, you could do vertical development of algae right exactly. here in Hawaii. Huh? Yeah, exactly. It's vertical farming. We just don't use sunlight. We use vinegar. We feed them vinegar instead of sunlight. Um, and we can grow, yeah, but it is vertical farming, just like in Singapore, they do with their lettuce, but also it's precision farming. And we are getting into that in our fields here in Hawaii, like how you moderate how much water goes in, the nutrients and stuff. But we have complete software controlled fertilization of our algae. So not one speck of nitrogen is wasted. And it also doesn't go out and there's nothing in our wastewater. Um, so we have, we have vertical farming combined with precision agriculture in this form of growing algae in tanks. Uh, are, yeah, are you we, regulated by state agencies, by the State Department of Agriculture, or or any state agency? Yeah, sure. If we import anything, anything biological is all done under permit. Um, but we, what we're doing in our labs is all, I mean, it's all regulated. There's nothing nothing unregulated. We grow, actually, we have a large collection of Hawaiian algae um, collected from my, my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but also, um, our, we are really, our function really here in Hawaii is as an R&D company, and our partner, our production partners are overseas. So they're the ones doing the big scale up, and we just show you can do it, and then they'll scale it up. Sure, it's like the shrimp. It's like, it's the, like shrimp. the shrimp. shrimp at HPU, you know, the... the uh... What do you call it? Shrimp, the, the parent shrimp. And uh, sure. you send the shrimp over and then people grow it in, in large quantities, but they only need it's broodstock shrimp. So I'm talking That's about right. Here. We can develop the strains and then we'll license out those strains. So as you mentioned, we're a microalgae products development company based here in uh, Hawaii. So our all everything that we do is developed around our um, patented novel dark fermentation process for growing the microalgae. And that fermentation process enables production of valuable algae uh, products at much lower costs and higher sustainability. And that's really reference sustainability is referencing our water use and our land use. The two products I want to tell you about is our lead product, which is astaxanthin, and then our pipeline product, which is a vegan protein. And as I mentioned briefly, our current status is that we're in um, in scale up production with a partner overseas, and they're manufacturing test batches of our algae that are going into the field trials for a variety of different uh, partners that we have. So we're at the Manoa Innovation Center, which is run by the University of Hawaii. We're just a 10 minute walk from the main campus. You can see our small research team. We're just three researchers in the labs there. Uh, in the top right, you can see one of our fermentation tanks. And then um, in the middle, you can see a smaller fermentation tank that's filled with our algae that is bright red from all the astaxanthin that it has produced. Our leadership is under the direction of uh, Claude Kaplan. He's our CEO with a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from the University of Cambridge. He's located in the UK. Myself, I'm a co-founder. My background is in plant breeding from Cornell University, and I'm the chief technology officer. And then the other co-founder is Gordon Wallace. He's our uh, chief administrative officer and has a background in project management. We recently received investment just this year, a few months ago, received a major investment uh, from Hatch Blue and from Aquaspark. Uh, they uh, Aquaspark is located in the Netherlands, and Hatch Blue is headquartered over in Nelha, and they're an um, aquaculture or um, sustainable foods company, uh, uh, outfit investor. You talked about Cornell. What, wasn't Cornell the place where this local guy, I want to say Japanese guy, went and discovered how to deal with the uh, the virus that was affecting papaya in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah, Dennis Gonzalez, Dr. G Dennis Gonzalez, um, yeah. brilliant scientist, now retired on the Big Island, um, and he um, he was one of the initial researchers for virus, papaya ring spot virus resistance that was then picked up by Dr. Richard Manshart at at the Manoa campus. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's, a world, huh? it's a small world. <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, axisantin. Um, You know, I've, I've heard. Some of this from uh, David Watermull, who went into it for a business a few years ago and um, believes that if you with that, you know, you can um, 
deal with uh, inflammation in the human body. There's all kinds of benefits. Can you talk about what it really is and what it does and why we should care about it? <laughs> sure. So, I mean, astaxanthin, it's, it's an antioxidant. It's also an inflammatory. And it's a big market. It's a billion-dollar market. Um, Cardax is who you were referencing. David right. They were, um, and there's another company here called Cyanotech on the Big Island. They they were growing as or producing astaxanthin to as an antioxidant for dietary supplements. But there's a much bigger volume use of astaxanthin, which is in fish feed. So, it's astaxanthin is this is a molecule, a long pigment molecule that is it, it's fat soluble. Uh, and it goes into redfish and shrimp. So any redfish and shrimp in nature that have those colors, um, they're eating astaxanthin through their natural diet. Is that like a salmon? Like the salmon. So salmon is a big source for astaxanthin. And because we can't wild catch enough salmon to feed everybody, there's there's farmed salmon. And in that farmed salmon, they will add the astaxanthin compound to give that um, salmon color to the flesh. And I'll, a couple of slides from now, I'll show you what it looks like if you have a salmon that's not fed this colorant. And what's really important is that the colorant that we have, so we have a natural astaxanthin product that's from natural algae, and that's required for any organic fish or shrimp, and also for certain territories like Scotland and Ireland, they will only use natural astaxanthin. But unfortunately, the market is dominated by a synthetic colorant since it's much cheaper than natural astaxanthin and it's produced in massive volumes. And that's what you need in aquafeeds is massive volumes. And so we wanted to change that. We wanted to get our natural product into the, into the fish feed market. Um, I can tell you our product has been tested. It's worked well in, in salmon, in rainbow trout, and vanamay shrimp, works great. So now that's what we're scaling up to do is to get into the, the fish feed business with it. But there's these other applications that the human and pet supplements, they're both, they're really important to our health. It's like you said, there was anti-inflammatory. It's um, like, so if you measure your C-reactive protein, you can see the levels go down when you have a constant diet, constant astaxanthin in your diet. Things like um, sports or athletes who want fast muscle recovery, astaxanthin has been proven in numerous scientific um, studies to benefit um, the, the muscle recovery. It's great for your eye health. It's great for our cognitive health. Oh, um, wow. Can I go it, buy a bottle of it or do I have you to can, take it? Yeah, you, you can get it. Um, you can buy the Hawaiian product here at Long's, at Long's CVS. You can buy it on the, find it on the internet. There's great products from Iceland, um, from Sweden, from France. Um, you can buy different products. We want to make it a lot cheaper though. So ours isn't on the market yet for, for dietary supplements, for food use, but when it will be, um, it'll be, um, we can produce it a lot cheaper. So that's that's what we're heading to as a company. Okay, I have some more definitional things I'd like to ask you about. Um, let's see. Hemo to, hemo to caucus. Hemo, Hematococcus is uh, yeah. blood and round, the Latin basis for for round cells that look like um, blood red when they're filled with astaxanthin. That's where that name came from. And that's the species name for this algae, which is found in Hawaii. It's found in um, many different continents. You can go to your bird bath and look for it. Um, and that is what is producing and is allowed, it's, that's been approved by the FDA um, for use as supplement and in food. It's allowed in Singapore, it's allowed in Europe, it's allowed in Japan and allowed in Canada in fish feed and human food. So that's that's all produced from Hematococcus pluvialis, which is the algae we're growing. Hematococcus, okay, I can pronounce it, yeah. And uh, on my list of questions is uh, rainbow trout. Rainbow trout is, I suppose, like Atlantic salmon, in the sense, um, you know, that, that there's, uh, um, you know, the algae is in there and it makes it ra red. Is rainbow trout red? Yeah. Mm. I haven't had enough rainbow trout in my life. Yeah. It's delicious. And and <laughs> and the the row is is one of the best rows, if you're into that, for New Year's <laughs> Eve parties. <laughs> sushi. Sounds like sushi. 
Okay, yeah, anti-aging exactly. is on my list too. Now, you know, we talk about anti-inflammatory, um, but that leads to anti-aging, right? Can you talk That's about right. how that works? Yeah, and, I, and I'm not a, a, a human physiologist or doctor, so <laughs> I'm not the best person to describe it, but because it's such a strong, it's one of the strongest antioxidants, and we know that um, fighting oxidative stress in our cells is critically important to health. Um, and that's what the astaxanthin molecule, by its chemical nature, it's a really strong, it can fight those free radicals. Free radicals are those stress oxygen molecules. It will absorb those and prevent that, them from doing damage to your, your metabolism. And that's that's why you, you find it in skincare products. Astaxanthin is, is a big deal in skincare products because even at in the cells of your skin, it can provide those protective effects. Uh, and yeah, I, I can you can I, there's a slide up here on the skincare. We we proved this with our astaxanthin product that we we took our extract called it has a trademark name called Astafusion because it's a fusion or cocktail mix of of astaxanthin plus other pigments like beta carotene and lutein. We um, that was tested in skin systems. Um, in Japan, you know, Tokyo University, and they there you can look at the paper that's referenced here from it's a 2021 paper in the journal of Oleo Science. They showed that by adding astaxanthin to the skin cells, you could restore the collagen and elastin fibers that make up our skin matrix. That's what keeps us puffy and non wrinkled. <laughs> that matrix. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't know about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, it so it prevents, as you can call it, anti wrinkling because it it prevents the collapse of your skin, uh, your, and that is caused by something very specific. That what we're talking about is caused caused by carbon related proteins that form if they're in sunlight or oxidative stress. I know it's getting a little complicated, but no, no, I want this. I want this. We always talk the language of science. We you know this is the way we we show people just exactly how much of a scientist you are. Well, and, and the, it's important because you can, in the skincare world, people make claims, but you need to have science that backs it up. And so you can do, you'll do these studies. I mean, these are studies that done, they're still in skin studies, they're not whole skin studies. But if you, as a consumer, you uh, use it, and then you can see for yourself how it performs. I mean, it comes, everybody's skin is different, but based on the science studies, it has this great potential. And so we have, we're really excited about our Astafusion, which is going to be launching in, in a, a brand, a U.S. brand this year. Um, so we're, we, you'll hear, if you talk to me a year from now, I can tell you more about it. Well, skin is, skin is important. It's important in burn cases. It's important in war wounds. I remember there was a a company, I don't know if it still exists, um, uh, in Hawaii uh, that had a, a product uh, that would replace skin and uh, in, in a case of a, a burn or a war wound. And I'm wondering if the exosantin um, uh, somehow expedites that or participates in the, in the redevelopment of skin. Yeah, that's interesting. I'd have to look into that more. But they're also, you know, they're using like, Fish scraps. I know in Norway they're doing this, using fish scraps also for heal for wound healing. Uh, and I, I don't remember the details of it. Hmm. Maybe there's a connection. Okay, I have more words for you then. <clears throat> Supercritical CO2 purification. I'm yeah. afraid at, at dinner my wife and I do not discuss that very often. But I wonder, wonder if you could help us with that. Well, if you're if you know, well, cannabis is extracted by that method. It's a way of purifying an oil um, using without using any chemical solvents. They just use they use CO two. So it's 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 a high temperature, high pressure CO two is used to take out to extract your bioactive compounds. Um, so they use it in cannabis. They use it for flavors and fragrance going into our foods. But they also use it for astaxanthin to get this really high purity of a compound because they're putting it into dietary supplements. Um, so turns out uh, this relates to the manufacturer or to the research or both. So that's the product that you buy at the store is extracted by that technology. 
Um, so it relates to the down, what we call downstream processing to make a consumer product is, is that extraction. But I should point out that a, a novelty or a difference with our material is that our material is a very soft algae that you can eat the whole algae. The material that is sold in longs right now, it all comes from a very hard matococcus algae. So it's as hard as a macadamia shell, if you know those. They're super hard. You got to crack them open to extract them. Our stuff is super soft. You can eat it, digest it, has great high digestibility. You don't need to even need to extract it. You can eat it directly. So that's what we're trying to shift is, is adding this. Why add the cost of extraction when you can eat the whole thing in a in a gummy, for example? You know, this this opens um, the imagination to the possibility that in the future, with these uh, new techniques of growing, extracting, what have you, um, uh, um, you know, this will be algae will be a food product that sustains people when there may not be. Um, you know, sufficient other food. Um, I mean, do you see this as becoming a, a world staple, as, particularly yeah. in countries that don't have a lot of food? Oh, absolutely. And so now we're, we're shifting, <laughs> we're shifting from astaxanthin as a specific thing to algae um, for nutritional value. So not for like antioxidant value, but for nutrition. It's, I ask myself, what's my purpose in life? And I think one of my purposes is trying to get algae nutritional algae out there at in large volumes and at low cost so we can fe continue feeding the world i mean we're running out of protein to feed the world we need to grow we need a, additional sources of of protein uh to feed to feed our growing population How, and even here in hawaii where we you know we don't want to import beef and and so forth we need to be algae protein so that's my that's what we we're trying to do and so we have um, our patent, our issued patent allows us to produce that algae protein from a different species that's also found in Hawaii. Um, and the question is, so how do you do that? But we want to um, deploy it globally, of course. If we can do, make it work in Hawaii, especially as we're running out of water for farming, um, how do we get that algae protein into our diets? We have a long-term plan for that, but there's a lot of questions. You got to want to eat it. You got to want to get the chefs to work with it and show that we can eat it. It's part of our the Hawaiian Island history. Eating algae is nothing new, but making for for you and me to shift over to it, it require it will require a lot of work with the you know the, the everybody here who's involved in the agriculture and the food scene and the consumers and um, making sure that it is sustainable and checks all those boxes for our future. So it's, I think it's one of the most important things we can do. If you go to like slide, let me just show you a couple of slides. Like if you go to slide 13 um, about our, thank you. This is um, sh showing about today's production of protein. It uses up so much water and land at levels that are threatening our humanity because we don't have that water and land anymore. So if you compare beef, protein, a ton of beef protein and a ton of soy protein with a ton of our algae protein. Those I listed how much water is used for each of those. And we our water uses only a frac we use only a fraction of the water and land footprints to make a ton of protein compared to soy protein or to to beef protein. And, and we want to fix that. That's our mission. So if you go to the next slide, well how do you do that? Um it's if you go into our dark fermentation within um we have an extremely fast process that takes a, a flask, just a few flasks of algae like you see in the photograph, and we can make a ton of product from that in just two weeks it, because it grows like a microbe. Algae grows like a microbe in our with our technology. That's what we want to implement. And then, but does it taste good? Can you put it into food? Yes, you can. So we've been doing, we've been making all sorts of food formulations showing that you can do nutritious protein enrichment in everyday foods by adding this in. You may not want to eat a 100% algae burger because that's not what you're used to. But if you can, if we can combine it with other compounds that you're com 
commonly eating, like in a pancake mix, we can double the protein content in that pancake very easily by adding our algae. And it makes it look really cool because we have this lime green color as a, along with some neutral colors. And it tastes like wheatgrass. When you mix it into this recipe, you don't even taste it. But if you eat it straight, it tastes like wheatgrass. And it's not fishy like spirulina. You know, the world's already eating microalgae. Spirulina is as it's very important in the diets in certain African countries, even Mexico City was surrounded by huge spir natural spirulina ponds. So this is like a spirulina, but it tastes better. It has a different protein profile, has higher di digestibility. So it's um, it, in a way, so it's, it's a different product offering that we think because we can grow it in fermentation, it doesn't need ponds, that we can be producing it on very landlocked areas like Singapore, like Hawaii in the future. That's our goal is to get there. Wow. Is, it, is this your main focus these days? No, th this is still our pipeline product. Astaxanthin is our main focus. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll, we're, we're having the discussions, the background discussions with all, with the, with everybody who we need to, to understand if, does it have a place in Hawaii or does it have a place in Singapore? Does it have a place in, in Ireland? Um, you know, where, where, where can we show best demonstrate that this algae protein has a place in our future to keep in, in the light of the climate change and so forth? That's very exciting. And, and I'm, you know, you. Uh, looking at it as scalable, my God, you know, the human race needs this. This could be what helps even save the human race going, going forward. And, and, and we're having it right here in Hawaii. Um, so what I take from this is that if you can uh, put a color on it, that's appealing. If you can put a taste on it, that's appealing. Maybe a texture, some kind. And if you can mix it in with something that is appealing in general, like in a hamburger, <laughs> yeah. what not? Um, then all of a sudden, it's very appealing food, and uh, people will eat it. And if you can grow it you know, vertically without using too much water. Uh, you can, am I right? You can do this in Hawaii. Hawaii can be, you know, for the first time in a long time, a major manufacturing, agricultural manufacturing center. And we can, you, we can have the E-word, that stands for export, the E-word. We can uh, export algae food products. Wouldn't that be something? Do you think about that, Heidi? Yeah, we do. And you know it is a long haul. We need we need um, you know there's a lot of people that we need to talk to to make sure it is the right. If we're actually just talking about it as a protein source for Hawaii, we need to talk be talking to the right people to to fill that out. Um, but when you say the right people, do you mean the, the capital interests or or uh, scientists? No, I mean um, Hawaiian practitioners. I mean mm -hmm. people who understand how we've used limu in the past, how we best make it uh, best work with it uh, you know microbes have been uh, understood by for hundreds of years as being really important to um to uh, how we do farming here but we because we're doing it in fermentation tanks you know we're using also you know fermentation is also very old technology but we're combining these different elements of putting algae into fermentation tanks to make a food is that is that appropriate? So we we need to understand that and talk to university professors and just work 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 it through the system as we work through the the nutritional side of it and food formulation side of it to show well look if you are if it is the right thing right solution for our future along with other protein sources here here's how you might want to use it so we're 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 looking at it at all angles again that's kind of my mission and in life now, but, but but as as a company, it, it's in a in our pipeline as we have these discussions and and getting the astaxanthin out to the forefront. I mean, we're a small sure, company; uh, we need to focus sure. right now. So, so um, uh, you know, one thing I remember is that there are other research scientists working on algae in various places in the world, um, and um, I, I don't know if they're you see them as competition or as uh, you know, colleagues in, in this scientific field. Um, but uh, can they, do they, will they uh, be part of a, some sort of global movement um, to establish uh, you know, ideal strains of algae? 
uh, as food product. Do you, do you have any contacts right now? Do you have yeah. any uh, collaborations right now? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We're collaborating with people who want to get these products out. You have to understand these, if the major food companies, even the major, um, but so both for alkyl protein and for I will ask to Xanthan, we've, we're talking to global players. They all have a, a mandate, for a sustainability mandate is called ESG. So environmental, social governance mandates, they take those very seriously and they have, they're going to have to shift th their, their raw materials that they're using in their foods to keep all of us alive. So, so that sustainability factor is critically important. And we we we're talking to as many people as we can saying, okay, look what we can do and what can, and working with you, we can do this even faster and better um, to get this before before our climate change is really beyond control. I mean, it, so we're talking about a totally self-sustaining production process um, for, for something that, I mean, again, it's one solution, it's not the solution, but we're, and yeah, we don't like to think of it as competition either. We're we're talking, we have willing partners who have to make their their mandates for ESG and let's, let's, let's all work together, not let's not, not compete. You know, when I think of the Colorado River uh, and the loss of water and the sure. awful uh, effects of climate change in California, even as we speak, where some places are drought, other places are flood, yeah. all the you know discombobulation of the climate. Uh, I say to myself, there isn't a lot of time. You mentioned that you have to do this, whatever it is, before we get you know too too wrecked by climate yeah. change. So, what what horizon do you see here? Uh, it, you've got to do it. I want you to do it. We all want you to do it, Heidi. And we want you, we want it to happen here in Hawaii. Nay. <laughs> but what's the what's the horizon that you have in your mind when you think of that? So for us, because we're a small company, partnerships are critical, and it's really becomes the horizon, the timeline of those partnerships uh, for for getting the products out there. Those big companies um, can. So we uh, we're doing our part. Five years, at, ten years. Our, 20, well, for, for which, well, okay, for Astaxanthin this year. So our product will be for sale this year. Um, so we can say that, which Good. is like protein product. It because there's insect proteins. There's all sorts of proteins. You know, alternative proteins is huge. We're one player. A lot of that. It sounds great, but it does come down to economics and also to the actual protein that we're we're making. Do we have something special? We think we do. We have patents around it or, and patents pending around it. How do you how do you get that out there? That's we're we're working on that, Jay. We're trying we're trying to understand how can we as this tiny little company in the middle of the Pacific have a global impact through through alternative protein. That's for a lot more discussions. Heidi, you can. I know you can. <laughs> and we will all be so happy. I mean, you know, the, the problem, we talk about it all the time, is, uh, you know, there's not enough agriculture to feed the people of Hawaii in a distressed situation, in extreme weather, for example, if the supply line is disrupted, who knows what? 90% of our food comes from the mainland. Uh, we have really got to figure this out. And well, boy, I, if we could do it here, wow. Yeah. I mean, if there if there's an appetite for it, and a will, you know, with $24 million, we can build a very large production plant that can provide, you know, a huge number of, of, of meals a day, protein content for meals a day for Hawaii. Um, that that's what that's my dream is to is to find that financing, build up these big beer vats and and do that production here. Can we revisit with you in a few months and Check status. Check yeah. the, uh, the status of the Astaxanthin, and uh, I can never pronounce it right. No, that's perfect, Astaxanthin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, absolutely. Would love to. And check the status of the, the protein food, all of that, would, and the fish, and all that. Uh, we would we would be delighted to follow you, and and to see where all this goes. This is so. I, I'm sure you will have to agree. It is so promising. It well, thank promising you yes. for why. We think and it you've is. been doing it for more than 20 years and and uh, it's public service. 
It thank isn't, it isn't business as much as a public service. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Heidi. Heidi Quinley, uh, Quinley Agri, Agri Systems in Manoa, Hawaii. So nice to talk to you and catch yeah. up. Thank nice you, to Heidi. talk to you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.